This is CounterPoint, and I'm your host, Tanya Granik allen It's been two and a half years since the unprecedented pro-democracy protests broke out on the streets of Cuba. Since that time, many thousands have been arrested and many still remain in detention. Recall that Cuba has been a communist country for about 60 years and as a result suffers rampant poverty and actually is the poorest country in any Latin American nation. The government headed by uh, Miquel Diaz Canal controls nearly every faction of life from electricity to food to the internet. Many have hope that democracy will be restored in their lifetime and we continue to protest for it. But is this misplaced hope or will Cuba emerge from the clutches of communism for the freedom of her people? Well, joining me now in studio to discuss this is Michael Lima Cuadra, founder of Democratic Spaces, representative for Council of Democratic Transition in Cuba. Michael, thank you so much for joining me today. I appreciate your time. Thank you for having me. Thank you. And I appreciate you coming in. And I know we've had you in studio before, and it's been almost two years and a lot has happened. So please bring us up to speed on where things sit democratically in Cuba right now. Well, the situation in Cuba right now, so as of 2024, is at the worst point since uh, 1959. The poverty, like there was a recent a recent poll conducted by an organization called uh, is is an observatory, it's a human rights human observatory, and they they are based in Spain. So they did uh, they conduct re interviews with about eleven hundred people across fourteen provinces, and they found that Cuba now has eighty nine percent of extreme poverty. People wow. are living in extreme poverty, and over ninety one percent are against the current regime. They openly reject the present system in Cuba. They openly said that they, they would prefer a system like the US system, 53% in that interview, and over 20% would prefer a system like the European one. Oh my goodness. So major issues are the health, healthcare, sanitary issues, uh, r lack of running water, uh, all the, the doctors, the good doctors have been sent in international missions to other countries. So Cubans are left without proper, proper medical care. So people are reacting to it. Uh, in August, there were 691 protests uh, across Cuba, Havana, Santiago de Cuba, mostly due to lack of social rights. People don't have water for a week. They cannot properly take a bath, uh, flush their toilets, like the basic, yes, very the basic. basic needs. And, and for our viewers' uh, information, so one million of the country, that's 10%, because now the, with a lot of people leaving, it's, it's gone down to about 10 million in the country. So 10%, one million, are without water. Uh, and there are several hours of, elect of electricity blackouts a day. Um, so if you live in Cuba, it is not uncommon for you have many hours of your day without electricity. You're in, in you know, no, the no lights. The blackouts are brutal. The blackouts are 10, 12 hours a day. Like, like in Havana, it's a, over 10 hours a day. In province, in, outside Havana, in Santiago de Cuba, it could be 12 hours, a, a, even more a day. Like recently, in March of, the, of this year, of 2024, there was a protest in Santiago de Cuba, and people complained that they didn't have electricity for 20 hours a day. Wow. So, yes, of course, people have fled the country. Cuba, since... A, 2021, since the major protest on July 11, has had the, the largest exodus in Cuban history. From yeah, any so point one Cuba, million have left since 2020. That's what, a, that's a, well, that's what they're saying, one million, but it, you said it's 600,000? To the U.S. alone, which you can go to the website of the U.S. Border Services, and they list 645,000. I think the population has decreased a million due to also deaths and things like that, right. but mostly those uh, over 640,000 that have fled uh, Cuba since 2021. And most have fled because they took part in the protests in July 11, and they were not captured, that they were not arrested at the time. But they fear that uh, the cameras uh, could capture them and they could later be arrested. Some of them were uh, warned by police, so, so they fled, most of them, or a large number of them fled due to political persecution. My goodness. And, and I think it's important for our, our viewers to remember that this is a communist country. You don't protest the government. There are consequences. So what we may take for granted as opportunity to protest here, say, for example, in Canada, 
You can't, you do something like that, the government will come down very heavy handed. And we saw that after July, <clears throat> uh, when we saw those so many thousands protests arrested and, and detained. Anyhow, we're going to continue this discussion when we return from this commercial break. Please stick around.